the heart. Could you hear that? You could hear that, right? People on the internet. Um, Visual sometimes is really good uh, when you can see it. And the Holy Spirit gave me this uh, one time before I ministered. It, it just it gives you a visual of the law of the spirit of life and the law of the sin and death, of law, the law of sin and death. And we both know that when we became Christ and we, been, we were redeemed, that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, you, be, you, you, you came, he came into you, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus took you out of the law of sin and death. He delivered you out of the law of sin and death. So you are supposed, we're supposed to be living in the law of liberty and freedom. That's the spirit. The life gives, the spirit gives the life. Yeah. But over here in the law of death, that's the old law. That's the law of the flesh. Not the skin. I'm not talking about the skin, the flesh. I'm talking about the human nature. The human nature without God. The, the, the passions and the frailties of the flesh. And that's what we used to live in. But see, we don't have to live in that anymore because, see, Jesus redeemed us. You died with him. You died with him. You rose again to a new life. But you have to train, and you have to conform your mind, and you have to feed on the word of God, and, and, and the, let the Holy Spirit as a process and change you, feeding on the word. But 
it, it, it shows you that the healing, divine health, rescue, safety, preservation, deliverance, set free, protect, do well, and it goes all the way down versus what's over here. But you know what? The children of God, well, why am I still sick and why am I going through this? Because we have to train to live and walk in the spirit. And we have to conform. And I said we have to conform to that. And so uh, with the renewing of our mind. And so today I just wanted to talk with you about uh, it's revelation. Revelation today. And Pastor Chuck said faith, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that word of God is the rhema word of God. It's the spoken word of God. Faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the spoken word of God. Revelation. Wow. That's how I was be able to defeat the devil. That's how I was be able to overcome Graves' disease. That's how I was able to get the victory because I had a word, a rhema word from God. I had revelation. Did you know that revelation brings separation? It's certainly bringing me separation through this book, Pastor Chuck. Because some people, that, uh, they read that book and it's like, it's like, whoa, I don't know where you're coming from. I mean, and I've, I've encountered that. Donna and I are traveling a lot and I get to minister a lot. And uh, I get to, I minister with people with PhDs and lots of really, lots of head knowledge. And this, it's, it's just like, it's just, whoa. And it does bring, it brought separation to Jesus. He brought a lot of separation. But revelation... It is, it is, it's a, a really important thing. It's the most important thing. You've got to have a rhema word from God. You've got to have the spoken. You've got to hear him, whether he speaks to you in that still small voice or else he, you, it, through his word. Uh, several years ago, I got attacked with uh, a disease called Graves' disease. And uh, it was, I think, back in about 2003. And... Uh, I didn't have the faith. I didn't go to a Word of Faith church. And the people that were I, the church that I was in, people were dying. They were dying. And, I, you know, I, 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 I knew, I, I had been healed before of minor things. You know, just speaking the Word, just speaking the Word by His stripes I'm healed. And I've had some minor, th but when it came to something serious, life-threatening, I didn't have the faith, I didn't have the revelation. I didn't have the revelation. I heard it, and I heard it by his stripes I'm healed. I heard he bore my sicknesses. I heard Isaiah. I heard Matthew. I heard First Peter, uh, is it 2.24 that he bore? I heard all of that, but I didn't have the revelation. I didn't have the revelation, the rhema, and that's what I want to talk about today. People that heard God and did what God said, and they got the victory people that heard God and did what he said um, we were just at a meeting I got to take a side little sidetrack here we were just at a meeting and uh, I just got this letter from a gentleman uh, we were at a meeting in uh, Michigan and I shared my testimony and and brought forth the word of faith and spoke and ministered healing and uh, a couple weeks ago I just got a letter from him listen to this <clears throat> Dear Paula, I'm not reading the whole letter. I'm just reading the parts you need to hear. You gave a powerful message Saturday. You listened to God and said what he gave you. It was life-changing. Without the first two, the third would not have happened. How many times, listen to this. This is the key. How many times in 64 years I've heard by his stripes we are healed? How many times in 64 years, he's 64 years old, have I heard by his stripes, we are healed? He's 64 years old. Not will be, but are. He's heard that. He heard it for 64 years. I don't know, but this I do know. I heard it Saturday. I think of all the internal issues I deal with and must admit I heard that I will be healed Saturday. I heard I, Saturday I heard I am. I was healed on the cross by the blood. I'm under every hurt and pain. Covered by that blood is healed. I need to walk out what I have, not wait for something in the future. What a revelation. What a relief.
You played your part in this understanding as you shared what you had learned through a very hard trial. You were faithful in sharing your testimony, and a life was changed. And you know what? That made it all, that made it all, all worthwhile to me that the 64-year-old man finally got the revelation of what Christ had already done on the cross, of the work that he already did, and that we appropriate it through our faith, and faith is action. Faith without works and, and actions is dead, deader than a doornail. So I was, uh, I didn't have the faith. I didn't have the revelation. And so I, ju I just ran right off to the first doctor, and I got the, um, I got the report, of course, the report of the devil uh, that said I had Graves' disease. Now, if you don't know what Graves' disease, uh, it's a, an immune disorder. It attacks the thyroid, and your thyroid is what controls your whole body. And it attacked it, and, it, and what it happens is, is that it made my thyroid go so, run so fast that it's like a car. Let me describe it like a car. You get into a car and you turn the key on and in the winter time, I don't know if you ever remember this up in the winter time, whatever, the idle's way up high and you gotta hit the gas pedal to get it to come back down again. Well, that's what it causes the thyroid to do, to run on a very, very high speed. And as a matter of fact, the doctor said, if you don't have it removed with radiation and take drugs the rest of your life, or have it killed with radiation and take drugs the rest of your life, not much of a choice, you'll die. Because eventually, the, um, it, it, it burns up. It, it started attacking my muscles. And my mu I was in another church. I wasn't in this church. This was back in 2003. And uh, so it's just started attacking my muscles. And uh, my muscles started getting very weak. And I ice skate. It's one of my passions is figure skating. And I couldn't, I couldn't skate. I, couldn't, I had to stop because I didn't have the strength. It started to eat away at my muscles. And then when it, 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 fi it finishes with the muscles, then it eats away at your bones. It starts eating the bo your bones away. There's a lot of other symptoms. I had tremors uh, in my body. I couldn't even put my makeup on. And so uh, the, the, I think it was the first doctor that I went to see he uh, told me, he said, do you know, he said, God gives diseases and Satan heals. Whoa. I have to tell you. <laughs> this is why I don't come against doctors. I never do when I teach and I minister. Because God uses doctors. Okay? All I'm saying is, is that you don't run off to a doctor without first consulting the great physician that lives with inside inside you you don't do that because there's a lot of weird doctors out there and I have to tell you there's medication that they can put you on that would kill you or it will do something even worse because I mean you're already healed so I never tell anybody I would never do that and uh, so anyway then I went to another doctor and he said the same he didn't say the same thing but he just he's the same uh, report and then uh, I, f I was in a start the symptoms started getting worse and worse and so then I, I ended up and found a third doctor over in Orlando and I don't need to give you his name because he's very very well known and it doesn't matter and so um, he said to me he said you know he said I believe that I can help you and uh, and so what he did was is he put me on these supplements and he put me on this little drug called tapazol and what it did was is it regulates the thyroid and uh, I started feeling better within a week I felt normal again my weight started I just the symptoms I, I felt I, I felt great on this drug and so but every month I would have to keep going back to Orlando and have and have uh, blood tests done I'd have to keep having those tests done and uh, uh, every every month in the meantime I was in a church up in uh, Sarasota do you know sometimes you have to get out of the boat you know sometimes you just have to get out of the boat and so I sensed that the Holy Spirit was telling me that I needed to leave that church because like I said people were dying there and so um, I came here this is where I came Faith International Christian Center <laughs> Hallelujah. And so uh, 
um, that's that's the one thing that I did and in the meantime I was going back and forth I was having the, and I had to get my faith built up because like I said I didn't have the revelation I could have sat here and listened to you and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have did what I did until I got a word until I heard God until I got a revelation and heard from him you know and like I said that man was 64 years old he just got the revelation and so um, I uh, uh, I think about uh, a year had gone by and uh, at one of my trips over there to his office and he said to me um, you know I think I know what the source of your problem is I think I believe I know what it is he says it's all of those mercury fillings that are in your teeth it's all of that metal stuff that's all in your teeth <laughs> mercury fillings and he says you need to go and have all of those fillings taken out okay well let me tell you something I was pretty upset like I said I'm here I'm building up my faith right I'm building up my faith in the Word of God all this time I'm, I'm exercising my muscle of faith you know you don't exercise it look and see under your arm if you don't exercise <laughs> woo, 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 woo. that's just like but that is, it's just like faith. If you don't exercise your faith, it becomes flabby. I had flabby faith. I didn't have the revelation and the faith to overcome that. And so, anyway, um, <laughs> Lord, help me to keep my train of thought. Father, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I get off on these chases. And so, um, I, I just came home really upset. Really upset. And I went to bed that night. And I opened up the word. And what just popped out at me? Remember we talking about revelation? Revelation. It came through the word. I started reading about King Asa, who had a disease in his feet. Okay? And because he put his trust in physicians, he died. God was speaking to me. And I went, whoa. I tell you, I, I just went, woo. And the next morning in my prayer time, I just cried out and said, Father, forgive me. Forgive me that my trust was in that doctor and my trust was not in you. It wasn't in you. And so, okay, so I call this my first crossroads. Okay? Um, I decided that I wasn't going to have the... Do you know what that would have done if I would have had those, those fillings taken? Every... every every tooth in my mouth is mercury filling it would have not only broken off my teeth my teeth because they had been in there since I was in my teens in early 20s these mercury fill it would have broken all my teeth to get them out of there do you know what the cost expense that would be to have all of that replaced and so I decided to take a step of faith remember we're talking about revelation and taking a step of faith and so I said, I'm not going to have that done. I'm just not going to do it. So I just ignored it. And I said, Lord, I know that my faith is getting built up at this time, you know. I'm starting to get my, my faith muscle exercised, and I'm starting to get it built up. Not going to have it done. So more time went by. More time went by. More time went by. And, uh, and I think it was probably almost two years, as a matter of fact, that I was on that drug was for about almost two years, I think. And so uh, I'm hearing the word, I'm hearing the word, my faith is getting built up, my faith is getting built up. And one day I got a call from the doctor. And he said, Paula, he said, I'm sorry, there isn't anything more that I can do for you. I thought that I could help you, but I can't help you. You need to go and have your thyroid cut out, removed, and take drugs the rest of your life or else get it killed with radiation and take drugs the rest of your life because I can't help you. Well, if that isn't where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> isn't it? Oh, yeah. And so whew, I went to bed that night. Now we're talking about revelation. Revelation, bringing separation. Revelation, having, having to have revelation, hearing from God. You can't stand in a storm without it. You've got to have a rhema word from God to stand. You've got to have it. It's what gives you, that's what faith, 
faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema word, the spoken word, the revelation, a rhema. You can stand on and the devil can't take it from you. People can't take it from you. Nobody can take it from you because you've heard from God. You got a word from God. You don't let go of that word. You just don't let go of it. And so um, I, uh, I went to bed that night and I woke up and I got, uh, I woke up with two rhema words from God. I got two scriptures that I woke up with in my spirit. Two. The first one was about Peter walking on the water. <laughs> Jesus said, you know, yeah, Peter said, if, you know, if it's, if it's you, Lord, get out of the boat. You've heard this a million times. I can tell you something. You can hear something a million times and not have the revelation to it. You can hear it a million times until you get the revelation to it. Until it, 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 it has meaning and it's real to you. And you understand it. It's, it's revelation. And so uh, he got out of the boat and uh, he uh, started to walk on the water. And what happened? Fear, doubt, and unbelief. The storm started to come and fear came in, doubt came in, and unbelief came in. And he took a swim. But you got to admit, at least he, he got out there. <laughs> he got out on that water. Praise God. He was doing some good practicing right <laughs> and then uh, the second scripture was about the children of Israel when they went into the promised land and Jesus God or God gave them the promise and the promise was the land oh the wonderful land with the milk and honey remember that God had given a promise but they had to go in and possess it yeah. what does it mean to possess they had to take it by force. They had to do something. They had to go in and fight the giants. God was going to give them the victory. He had promised it to them. He promised it to them. And, uh, and, and we know the, the end result of that was fear, doubt, and unbelief. That's why they didn't go in, fear, doubt, and unbelief. Well, think of it as the same thing. The children of God today have a promise right up there. Those promises are bestowed, have already been bestowed on us. They've already been given to us through faith, appropriated by your faith. The children of Israel got a promise, and they had to appropriate it by faith. These promises that are up here, that, are in, that we live in the, um, the law of the spirit of life, they're already there. They're over there, see? And so um, they had that promise in the same thing. The children of God today have a promise, the same thing. Right there. You're in the spirit. You're in the law of the spirit. You live in the spirit. There's no condemnation or judging guilty of wrong to those who walk by the spirit, to those who do not walk according to the flesh. So that tells me that you can walk by the flesh. And you wonder why you're still reaping and you're not getting the victory. Because it's the carnal nature. You, it has to be through the spirit, the spirit of the law of liberty that you live in. You can't do it in the carnal. It can't be done in the carnal, the flesh. That's a good visual right there. And, and so, uh, Lord, help me to stay on track here. Boy, I get on sidetracks those who live not according to the dictates of the flesh that that tells me that you can live according to the dictates of the flesh and that you can reap over there the law of sin and death because the law of sin and death is still in effect it's just like the law of gravity you can't see the law of gravity but if you go up on the building and jump off you will see the law of gravity okay you will experience it you can't see the law of sin and death, but it's still there. The old law is still there. The law of Moses is still there. The human nature without the spirit, it's still there. And that's why the children of God go be home be before their time. Because they're still operating in the old law. You can still do that. That's why you've got to stay under the word. You've got to have good teachers. You've got to... You gotta, you you got to stay close to God, and you got to read the Word, not just read it. You got to meditate on it. You got to hear it. You got to hear it, and you got to stay in church. You got to you got to grow. You got to grow. You got to mature. Your spirit's got to grow. You, you, you it, it's a process. It's a process. 
Where was I? <laughs> Where was I? Yeah. Yeah, the dictates of the flesh. So that's why you reap. That's why you're still, uh, those things are happening. So anyway, um, uh, where was I with my testimony? Yes. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, the children of Israel. Okay, the, the, people, the people of God are, is just like the people of, of, of Israel. God gave us a promise, I said, but you've got to go in and possess it. You have to, you have to appropriate it through your faith. And faith is action. You have to believe God, and you have to put action to it. So through these scriptures that God was giving me, I knew what God was saying to me. It was revelation. I had to make a decision. Am I going to believe God? Am I going to get out of the boat and throw the drug away, put action to what I believed? Or am I going to stay in the boat and sink? Or am I going to stay in outside of the land of milk and honey, outside of the promise, and perish in the wilderness just like the children of Israel perished in the wilderness? Because I would not, because if I wasn't willing to take that step of faith, I got these Rhema words, okay? And so I decided I was going to get out of the boat. I was going to go into the promised land, and I was going to fight those giants. And I was going to possess my promise. Okay? It's our choice. It's our choice. Still our choice. It's always going to be our choice. But I'm going to tell you right now for an absolute fact, and it's the truth. That spirit demon of fear, doubt, and unbelief is very, very strong. It's a strong spirit. And it is a spirit because God says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, love, and a sound mind. It's a spirit, and it lights on you, and it causes you to doubt, and it causes you to have unbelief, and it causes you to be fearful. I went up in the bed. I want to remember this just as clear as can be. It's like I, 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 I went up. In, I was in my bathroom, and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off of this drug. So I decided I was going to take and cut it down. The moment that I decided to do that, that spirit of fear was right there. I remember it when I was in the bathroom. I'm telling you, I shook just like this. That spirit of fear. That spirit of fear was on me. And you know what that spirit of fear was saying to me? That spirit of fear was saying, if you stop that drug, you're going to die. You're going to die if you stop that drug. You will die. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And you will die. And I was like this. And I had to take, I had to take authority. I had to take authority over that and bind up. I said, cast out that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. You go, you spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus. So I took the pill, the drug, and I cut it down to a, a three quarters. Then a week later, I cut it down to a half. Then a week later, I cut it down to a quarter. And then a week later, I just threw the drugs. I just I threw them away. I just flushed them down the toilet. But I have to tell you that <laughs> it wasn't a matter of only several days, and those symptoms started coming back. And they started coming back in a rage. They were coming back like a flood. But you know what? <laughs> I had the revelation. I got the rhema. The rhema word. I heard God. And in my prayer time, when it was quiet and I was with the Lord, I could hear the Lord. I heard the Lord speak to me one time. He said, the devil doesn't give up easy. Guess what? The devil doesn't give up easy. He doesn't give up easy because he knows whether you know that you know that you know. He knows whether you know or not. And he doesn't give up easy. And he knows by what you do and by what you say. That's how he knows. And he doesn't give up easy. And so 
uh, it started getting really bad and the symptoms were getting really bad but I had the rhema word I said Lord I know I'm healed I don't care what happens I don't care what happens Lord I believe you and I know I'm healed I don't care how bad it gets I don't care and nine months to the day the symptoms started going away one by one the symptoms started to go away and the Lord told me to do a healing encounter over remember that pastor Chuck down there in the inline rink down there and uh, to minister healing to other people and that last symptom left that night so I pray that my testimony spoke to you because you know uh, a testimony you can't have a you can't have a uh, a, a testimony without a test you can't I went through a, a great trial and I won because of Jesus I won I won praise God totally completely healed healed delivered and free and uh, I just I just I, I you know I, I, this this isn't scripture this word is not I'm sorry this word is not scriptural but there's a lot of truth to it the person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person with an argument ever I had an experience God taught me he gave me revelation and that's why I can stand here today and I can share and I can teach the word of faith because I've gone through it and I've seen it I lived it and we were talking about revelation revelation the word revelation in the Greek means disclosure appearing lighten to lighten manifestation be revealed revelation to take off the cover uncovering the veil of darkness it is the communication of the knowledge of God to the soul and uh, so I only do what I hear God tell me to do you know you should say that I only do what I hear God tell me to do because Jesus only did what he heard the father tell him you know we're to be we're to be we're to be little Jesus's because we have the divine the divine uh, uh, nature of God living on the inside of us when we got saved God the great physician lives within us you know we're to do as he he did speak as he spoke and do the things that he did we're supposed to be doing that we're not supposed to be walking around uh, in sickness and disease with all kinds of maladies and infirmities and everything else God's people are not supposed to be and so uh, but God's ways are not our ways his, high, his ways are higher that's why we've got to hear him we've got to hear what he says uh, Jesus said I came into the world for judgment as a separator he said that in order that there may be separation between those who believe me and those who don't to make the sightless see and to make those that see become blind he he he, he was the separator <laughs> Jesus was and they ran from him some of the things he did uh, for instance John 6 53 you cannot have any life and this is what Jesus said you can't have any life in you unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood now a lot of people separated from him big time did they run the other way did they not whoa eat your flesh and drink I can't handle that but that's not what he meant he meant was unless you appropriate his life live it feed on it Jesus is the word you don't eat his flesh that's cannibalism you feed you feed on his flesh you feed on the word of God you let it become part of you his spirit the life-giving spirit is within you Jesus is the bread of life you know we we partake of him we partake of the word of God and, and Jesus is the word he became flesh he's the living word and so uh, it's the spirit that gives life he's the life getter, giver and many of his disciples drew back returned to their old associations and no longer accompanied him they didn't accompany, accompany him after that whoa that man's weird man whoo. many were offended well many people get offended today in the body of Christ they're offended I've had people offended when I share my testimony and I speak the word of faith to them they get offended don't don't you pray for me don't you know uh, they get offended over it that sure brought separation that, that brought great separation 
It didn't make the children of Israel very happy. I hope you brought your lunch. It didn't make the children <laughs> of God, it didn't make the children of Israel very happy when God told them to go in and possess the land either. How many of them actually believe God? Two of them, was it? Joshua and Caleb, the rest of them, the rest of them hightailed it out of there. They hightailed it out of there. Boy, that was a separation, wasn't it? But there was a couple of them that believed, and they went in, and boy, they obtained the promise. They fought the giants, and they believed God. Uh, uh, let's see, Matthew 12, 50. For whoever does, does is action. Action, whoever does. The will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. Remember when he said that? When his mother and brother came to him? And uh, he looked at the people when he was speaking, and he said, he said, who is my mother and my brother? And my, it's those who do the action, those who do my will. Okay? Jesus, um, for example, uh, here's some really strange things. Think about this. Think about this. God is a God that's out of the box. He heals in, in, in strange ways. He does things in really strange. I mean, look at the children of Israel. They got on the edge of that cliff. They had no way to go. There was no way. There was just no way. And then all of a sudden, the, the water split apart. I mean, God makes ways where there is no way. He makes ways where there's no way. He's the God of the impossible. He, we spoke that today. Look at sticking his fingers in a deaf man's ears. Picture that. And spitting on his tongue. Is that strange? The deaf man began speaking and he heard. That's really weird. Would you, if somebody said that, if you were in a healing line, would you be offended and walk away? Or would you do it the way that God wants it to be done? He really does it in different ways. God heals in many different ways. And it may, and, and some people may not receive, it may, I don't even want to say that. You will receive it. But um, I, I just really believe this with all my heart. There's a time to be healed. There's a time for everything. And you, you already are healed, but maybe it's going to happen this time. Or maybe it's going to be uh, in this service. Or this is how it's going to be. Uh, it's God's perfect timing. God's perfect timing. He also spat on the ground and made clay mud with his. Going to be, it's going to be somebody's time here today, because God's going to heal. God's going to do some healing here today, yeah. in in not just bodies, but I just I feel like in the spirit with the with the heart healings of the hearts, healing of the heart. He also spat on the ground, made clay, and it was his saliva. He spread it his ointment on the man's eyes and said to him, "Go wash in the pool of Siloam." Okay, well, there was action there. He had to do that. He had to put action, right? Action. What happened if he didn't go? He wouldn't have been healed. He had to, he believed God and he went and he did it. What about the woman caught in adultery? The woman caught in adultery. He was there and they, they, they said to him, what do we do? Uh, you know, tell us what to do with this woman. And so he's bending down and he's writing in the ground because he's waiting to hear what his father is saying to him to tell him. Just like with us. We've got to hear and we got to do. We got to hear and we got to do. And so you know what he spoke. He was without sin. Cast. Wow, that was powerful. That was just very powerful. Uh, he, um, the apostles did great exploits because they heard and did what they and did what they heard. The dead were raised. The blind saw. The uh, the the disease. All, every sickness and disease was healed. Uh, he healed all who were sick, sick and oppressed of the devil. What's oppressed? Oppressed is sickness. Oppression is sickness. It's depression is sickness. Jesus said if we believe we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You can drink any deadly thing and it won't harm you. I didn't say to do it on purpose. There was a man just a few, just a week ago or so I heard on the news. He was, he was a pastor and he was playing with snakes all the time. He was m handling snakes because he was doing what the word of God said. You can pick up serpents and and they and they if they, they they won't hurt you guess what he died he got bit and he died because he tempted the lord thy god jesus said don't test the lord and things if, if you get bit by one you won't die if you believe that if you drink something deadly or eat something deadly don't freak out and say i'm gonna die you will no you won't jesus said no i can by mistake if you do, you do that you won't Abraham's faith was brought to completion when he implemented it. That's when he put action to it. It wasn't complete until he went and took his son and put him on the altar. He had to put action to it. Um, and we know the result of that. 
Joshua's success was due to his attitude toward God. What's our attitude toward God? His, Joshua's success was due to his attitude toward God and the revelation of the law. He had a revelation. He had a revelation. That's why he was successful. He brought the next generation of the children of Israel into the promised land because he had revelation. But his big mistake was this. <laughs> This, uh, all of the kings of, his, of the enemy, all of the kings got together and they put on all these old clothes and they had all of this food that looked like it was moldy and they went and they had their shoes were worn out and then he, uh, they went, went to Joshua and instead of Joshua going and asking God and the word says that we're to acknowledge God in all of our ways and he'll direct our path, he didn't acknowledge God. Joshua didn't. That's the biggest mistake he made. He did not acknowledge God in it, and he just made a covenant with his enemy. He didn't know it was his enemy. God knew it was his enemy, but he didn't ask. We got to stop just doing things without asking God. We need to ask God about everything. We need the mind of Christ about the, 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 the choices and the things that we do, because he'll tell us, he'll show us. Then you won't make a covenant with the enemy, you know? Uh, Elijah built an altar to God. How did Elijah do all of that stuff? I mean, that's awesome if you read about Elijah when he built that altar and did that sacrifice in front of all of, the, all of Israel. And, and, and he poured the water, and he poured the water, poured the water, poured the water. And um, why, did he, why was he so... Why? Because he heard God. He, said, he, he, uh, he heard what God said. He didn't do it on his own. He heard what God said, and he did what God told him to do, and he was successful because the fire of God came down. And guess what? All of the, 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 the people believed God. They came back to God. He was successful because he heard God. Revelation, Rama. He heard God. He was successful. Wow. What about Gideon? Gideon won the battle. He had 32,000 men and ended up with 300 men, and he won the battle. Why? Because he had revelation. He heard from God. These people heard from God. They did what God told them to do. Jehoshaphat won the battle. He won the battle because uh, God told him, he said, send out the praisers first. Dress in holy attire. Go out there and worship. And I'll win the battle for you. And they routed the enemy and they won the victory because he heard from God. He did what God wanted them to do. Esther, she had, she won. Look at what Esther did. She won, uh, Haman was going to wipe out all of the people, all of her people. She heard God, but she said, even if I should perish, I'm going to do this. And she won because she heard God. Ezekiel did as God said and watched an army of dead bones come to life. They didn't just come to life. You don't do things. You've got to hear from God. You do what God tells you to do. Revelation. Naaman, this is really good, and I'm going to end with this, Naaman, because this is important, um, the story of Naaman before I minister healing. Um, uh, we, were just, uh, we were just at a meeting, Don and I, over in um, Ormond Beach. It was a few weeks ago, a month ago, or whatever, and uh, there was a woman there, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, Oh, it was so strong, just powerful, strong. I knew God wanted to heal her. I knew it. And, uh, and then I went and I ministered, and she didn't respond. She didn't respond. And I tell you, I was so perplexed over that. I just couldn't. Lord, you spoke to me. You told me you wanted to heal her. And she didn't even respond. I, I, I just really just, I, I, Lord, why? Well, I got up to my room, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Naaman, Naaman. She didn't think it should have been done like that. She was offended the way God wanted to bring the healing. And we know about Commander Naaman, that when he got to Elijah's house, Elijah said, go and wash in the Jordan. He was offended because that was a dirty, muddy river. And I'm the commander of an army. My, I just don't stoop myself for that. He, there was pride there. And, and we thought, well, God just wouldn't do it like that. Well, I ministered healing in a way that 
she just didn't think God would do it like that. That's not of God. And so she missed it. So we can miss it when we look and we see, you know what, God wouldn't use that vessel or God wouldn't do it like that. That's not how God would do. Now, I, mean, I just got to explain to you many different strange ways, you know, when God wants to heal. So uh, this, there's just one last thing before I do this. Hold on just a second. Thank you, Lord. I know. I just feel that the Lord wants me to do this. This is a word. So, sorry, I got to do this again. This is a word that the Lord wants to bring forth before I minister healing. Thank you, Lord.
Now I want to minister uh, to you. This is going to be, this is going to be your step of faith. Because remember, we've been we, we've been talking about faith. Faith is action, and this is how God wants to do it. <laughs> I'm only doing what the Lord is telling me to do. Okay. The rose, the rose petal. What about the woman at the the woman with the issue of blood? What did she have to do? First, she heard that Jesus was in town, right? She heard all of the things that 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 he was doing, and so what did she do first? She believed it, right? Wow, she believed it. Then what did she do? She spoke it. She said, "If I can just go and touch the hem of his garment, picture this as the hem of his garment. This rose. This is the hem of his garment." It's symbolic. It's not really the hem of his garment. The hem of his garment didn't heal the woman. The faith, the action, she went. So see, she believed, she spoke, and then she went. She put action to it. She got to town, she crawled under the crowd, and she got to him. And she, and it, but she spoke it too. She said, if I just touch, if I just, so she believed. She believed, she spoke, she put action. And then she went and she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. But God likes, God, God uses rose petals. But it isn't the rose petals that's going to heal you. It's your faith. It's the action that goes with it. And I'm going to minister this dance. It's called Blessings. And at the end of the dance, when I'm done, this is the important part. This is where you come in. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to hold this rose. And you come forward. You need healing. You could do it if you know somebody else and stand in proxy for somebody else. But it's your step of faith. You come forward and you peel off. Take and peel off a rose petal. But you've got to put the action to it. You come forward, you peel off the rose petal and take it. That's your step of faith. Because I believe that the Lord wants to heal. There's hearts that need to be healed. Whatever it is that needs to be healed today, today is your day. But it's your faith that will make you whole. Okay? Pray. 
This world. 